Hi everyone, welcome back to Diamond Dave's Billiards. Today we're going to do a Diamond Dave deep dive into a cue that many players consider to be one of the best jump cues on the market, the QTech Synergy Propel. If you want to hear the Cliffs notes, I can tell you now that the quality is excellent, the performance to me appears excellent, and the subjective value I think is pretty good. If you want to hear more detailed thoughts on these topics, then stay around because first up we're going to look at the facts. The Qtech Synergy Propel is packaged in a high quality, thick cardboard protective box. The lid secures with the magnetic latch and opens to reveal a detailed description of the Q, a breakdown of its components, and instructions on caring for the Qtech Propel. A thin layer of foam covers the Q itself, with the shaft occupying one side of the case and the main handle and extension occupying the other both securely protected in a firm velvety rubber material. The QTech Propel consists of a 29 inch Synergy carbon fiber composite shaft, a 15 inch main handle, also consisting of carbon fiber composite materials and a mini extension coming in at three and a half inches. The main shaft is smooth on the bridge hand with a classic matte carbon finish, while the main handle and mini extension have a glossy finish that provides decent grip while playing shots with or without the extension attached. The Propel comes installed with the 13.9mm Taum 2.0 brake jump tip which, according to Taum, is made from synthetic compounds. The Propel with the main handle attached weighs 7.75 ounces. The extension adds a considerable 3.25 ounces for those long distance jump shots, bringing the total weight to 11 ounces. Okay, so the facts look pretty good. And while my conscience does want to complain about the packaging from an environmental standpoint, the quality does inspire confidence and should assuage any concerns about shipping. To be honest, some other companies, Mez for example, could certainly take a paragraph, if not a whole page, out of Qtech's book on packaging. This is the box for my $800 Power Break G. Mez, I love you guys and I love your cues, but seriously, $800 in this. But at the end of the day, the thing that matters most is the quality of the product. And to be fair, while the box is fantastic, it's really just gonna sit around and take up space. Because if I ever wanna sell this cue, having this fancy box is gonna help. Whereas if I sell my Power Break G, I don't think anyone's gonna request this piece of thing for protection. Saying what matters most is the product. What is the product actually like? Let's have a look at quality first. First off, before looking at the actual quality, let's talk about the three color options that the QTech Propel comes in. This is the Galaxy Gray model. It has a basically a black base with a metallic gray flake through it. The mini extension has a really nice red accent for the QTech logo, and the main handle has the Propel logo in white with QTech in red next to it. The other option you can get it in is Ruby Red. The Ruby Red has a red base with a similar metallic flake through it, but on the Ruby Red model, the QTech logo on the mini extension is in black. If memory serves, on the main handle, the Propel logo is also in black, while the QTech logo is in white. And probably the hardest model to get your hands on is the Propel Ghost Edition. And the Ghost Edition is basically your blacked out version for uh, pool hall assassins and ninjas. The main handle and extension are in a carbon fiber black that matches the carbon fiber shaft. And beneath the QTech logo on the extension, it has printed in black Ghost Edition, while all the logos and labeling are also printed in black. Regardless of your taste and style, I'm, I'm pretty sure anyone would be happy with one of those three color options. Having said that, I should also note that the QTech website specifically lists the Propel as being fitted with a red Taum 2.0 brake jump tip. However, when my cue came from Seabirds, I found it was installed with a white Taum 2.0 brake jump tip. It doesn't bother me particularly, it doesn't affect the playability, obviously. I personally 
would have preferred the red tip. I think it would have suited the, the red accents quite nicely. And who am I to begrudge anyone their personal preference in tip color? So if that's your thing and you're dead set on the red 2.0 town brake jump tip, then I would contact your chosen supplier first just to make sure that it will actually ship with the red tip and not a white one. Okay, so let's look at the quality of the finish of the Q. I think the quality of the finish is fantastic. The glossy finish on the main handle and the mini extension look really good and gives a nice shine to that metallic paint job. I think they've chosen good colors for the logos. They don't pop out too much, uh, but give a nice little flair to the Q. The carbon fiber shaft is immaculate. A lot of carbon fiber shafts have a seam that runs the vertical length of the shaft, including one of my favorite, in fact, it is my favorite shaft, the Mez Ignite. Obviously, when I'm down on the shot, the seam isn't tactile or visible, or it wouldn't be my favorite shaft. So those seams are usually very insignificant, but I have put the Qtech Propel Synergy shaft under the proverbial microscope, and it's absolutely flawless. I can't see a seam running anywhere the, the length of the shaft. Those don't really affect playability, but the finish on this one is fantastic. I also really like that the, the mini extension has a round domed rubber cap on the end. There's no particularly sharp overhanging edges that will get scratched on sharp corners or on hard wooden floors. And if you take off the mini extension, you can see that the main handle has a plastic protective cap and that gives the cue a finished look when you take off the mini extension, unlike some of the jump brake cues where when you use it as a jump cue, the cue kind of feels half finished or incomplete, but this little cap gives it a nice finished look as well, whether you've got the mini extension or not. And speaking of the mini extension, this might just be me, but I get really excited by good quality threads. I get really excited by good quality threads. The threads on the mini extension and the main handle are really smooth. You can hear, you know, no squeaking, fit really smoothly and snugly. I really enjoy putting this cue together and taking it apart because the threads are just so nice on it. So I'm really happy with that as well. Overall, I think Qtex done a really good job with the production of this cue. I think all the three paint jobs look fantastic. I think the metallic finish on the main handle and extension look great. The shaft is really well finished. The joints are smooth and they lock in nice and tightly and the packaging is fantastic as well. If you're into large, secure packaging, for your shaft and, and who isn't really. Is the Qtech Propel a quality product? Yes, it definitely is. Does it perform as well as it's built? Let's have a look. Up next, we're gonna look at performance. Okay, so before I talk about performance, let's talk about what a jump shot actually is. And for starters, it's less of a jump and more of a bounce. You're literally driving your cue at such an angle into the cue ball that it forces it into the slate and then bounces it off the slate over the object ball. In order to do that, a jump cue should have certain properties to make it easier. For starters, it needs to accommodate an elevated stance because you need to get the, the cue angled down into the cue ball. Most players hate playing shots with their cue elevated because it's so uncomfortable and it's difficult to control the cue. So for starters, a shorter cue makes it easier to control the cue and get it up high as well. You can grab the end of the cue, get it nice and elevated. So a jump cue should be relatively short. The other thing a jump cue needs to be, in my opinion, is quite light because with that elevated stance, you have less room to generate power. If you think about swinging your fist, while it's empty compared to holding, say, a two or three kilogram weight, the acceleration of the empty fist is gonna be a lot faster than the acceleration of the fist that's holding two or three kilograms. And I think that counts for a jump cue as well. When the cue is light and you have little room for a backswing because of that elevation, you can get more acceleration. Now, of course, the fist with the two kilogram weight will at some point get up to the same speed as the empty fist. And when it does, it will pack more of a punch. The other thing I think a jump cue needs to be is very stiff because you need that shaft to drive into the cue ball without deflecting either way. When the cue goes down into the cue ball, you want it to be going straight through without the shaft whipping to the left or the right if it's slightly off center. The more the, the shaft can stay straight and strong, the more energy is gonna be transferred directly into the cue ball, thus making it bounce off the slate easier. 
If the shaft whips or flexes to the left or right, some of that energy is going to be lost and there's more chance for miscuing. So in my opinion, a jump cue has to have a very stiff shaft as well. And finally, a jump cue needs to have a good tip. It needs to be hard, hard enough to transfer the energy into the cue ball, but it also needs to be able to take chalk as well. And get a little grip so it doesn't just slip off the edge of the cue ball. In my opinion, a jump cue needs to have four things. It needs to be of an appropriate length. It needs to be relatively light to generate speed. It needs to be very stiff in the shaft to ensure that speed and energy is transferred into the cue ball. And it needs to have an appropriate tip that is hard enough to send the energy in and also grip the cue ball. So how does the QTEC propel weigh up in terms of those? I think the length is perfect. And like I said already, you have the flexibility of removing the mini extension for dart strokes or close up jump shots or you can put the mini extension on for long distance jump shots or just normal distance jump shots. I should mention as well that the mini extension is remarkably heavy. It's three and a quarter ounces. When the cue is completely built, it weighs 11 ounces. The shaft is about three and three quarter ounces or three and a half ounces. The main handle is around four ounces, four and a half ounces. The mini extension is almost as heavy as both of these individually. So as soon as you add this on, you get a lot more heft in the in the queue which is great for those long distance jump shots where you're more concerned about distance on the cue ball as opposed to getting the cue ball to jump quite high quite quickly when the cue ball is close to an object ball not only do you get a little extra length for a bit more backswing but it adds quite a lot of weight and that's what i was referring to when i was talking about extra weight adding a little extra punch i think the length and the weight of the cue is great carbon's really light you know, this shaft is amazingly light, which helps with acceleration and speed when you take your backswing. And the next factor I mentioned is stiffness of the shaft being important to generate power. QTEC actually recommends never applying lateral force to the shaft because it has zero flex or whip in it. To my way of thinking, the less flex and whip in a shaft, the more energy will get transferred into the cue ball. And it's generally accepted that carbon transfers more energy than wood. I don't know that to be a fact, but I do know that carbon fiber is a lot less elastic than wood. A quick little Google had me stumble across something called Young's modulus. And basically Young's modulus measures the elasticity of a flexible object. The average maple wood has a Young's modulus GPA of 10, and the average piece of carbon fiber has a Young's modulus GPA of 200. Maple wood is a lot more elastic than carbon fiber. Logically, I would therefore assume that the shaft will flex less when it hits the cue ball, meaning more energy is transferred straight into the cue ball and less chance of whipping off to the left or right. So I think carbon fiber really helps a jump cue perform well. How does it stand up with the tip? I think the Town 2.0 brake tip is a really good choice. It's the first time I've actually used it before on a jump cue or a brake cue. It's definitely hard enough to transfer lots of energy into the cue ball, but at the same time, it's grippy, it holds chalk quite well. You should be able to see that holding the chalk quite nicely. Some other jump cues I've used, Mez for example with the Sonic Trans tip, I find it really hard to get the, the tip to hold chalk, but I have no problems with this tip holding chalk. In fact, the Town 2.0 brake jump tip is grippy enough that I even have no problems playing jump swerve shots. Not that that's a particularly high percentage shot, but while playing around I did play a few and uh, found them quite easy to perform. Of course, a lot of these factors are personal preference. Definitely playing cues are completely subjective. I would almost find it pointless to do any kind of review of a normal playing cue except to talk about its quality or its finish or design. I think with a jump cue because it has such a specific purpose it's a little fairer to review them because there are certain characteristics I think they need to possess in order to jump the ball. Well having said that can I say whether you will like the QTEC Propel? Of course I can't. I can tell you my opinion, I can tell you my expectations of what I think a jump cue should do and I can tell you whether I think the QTEC Propel reaches those expectations but your expectations may be entirely different. I can't say whether you will like it. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording when I did this, but the very first shot I played with the QTEC Propel after using a wooden jump cue for six years, the cue ball flew straight off the table. And I'm not particularly good at playing jump shots. I come from a snooker background, so for 15 years I've never played a single jump shot in my life. And even after playing American Pool for eight or nine years now, I avoid jump shots whenever possible. I did have a Mez Air Drive 2, the wooden one, before the carbon one that has the little mini uh, dart stroke extension. Still, I avoided jump shots whenever possible, but with this, 
I can play dart strokes, I can play long jump shots, I can play swerve jump shots, I can control the cue ball fairly well. I still need a lot more practice with my jump shots, but the difference for me personally, the difference between using this Propel, a carbon fiber jump cue, compared to the wooden jump cues I've used in the past is night and day. I'm sure there are players who can jump just as well with wooden jump cues as they can with carbon jump cues. For me, someone who probably doesn't have a particularly good technique when it comes to jump shots, I instantly felt a massive difference playing jump shots with this cue as compared to my old wooden jump cue. How do I rate the performance? I think the performance is excellent and given the flexibility of the cue it allows me to play all the jump shots that I would generally need to in a uh, in a game of nine ball or rotation. So, will I be going back to my Mez Air Drive 2? Uh, no, I won't. I'll be staying with the QTech Propel. So, if anyone wants a Mez Air Drive 2 with a Piku jump brake tip installed, hit me up or uh, maybe a giveaway if I ever hit a thousand subs. In my opinion, the performance is great. The next question we should look at is the value. Got a few notes here because value really is subjective. Everyone's personal finances are completely different and what one person is willing to spend on a queue, a playing queue, let alone a jump queue is completely different, particularly given that a jump queue has fairly limited use. So absolutely value is very subjective, but what we can do is look at comparative value. So I've got a little list here to refer to so we can sort of place the Propel amongst its peers and see how it compares to them in terms of value. The Q itself is listed on QTech's website as retailing for $479. Now, of course, you can usually find it cheaper. CBITS, I believe, has it listed for $429. You rarely pay retail price, but in terms of looking at value, I'm gonna use the retail prices for all these products. If you want a QTech Synergy playing shaft alone, that will set you back $449. A Jacobi Black Shaft, retails for $475, the Predator Revo shaft for $499, and the Mez Ignite, my favorite playing shaft, retails for $569. This cue itself is cheaper than most shafts alone in terms of a carbon fiber shaft. How does it compare to other jump cues? The Mez Carbon Air Drive retails for $510, or if you want a mini extension, it's an extra $50, taking it to $567. The Predator Air Rush retails for $599. $9, may as well say $600. If we look at some wooden hybrid jump cues, the Predator Air 2 retails for $269, the Muchi Pogo for around $330, and the Lucasi Airhog 2 for $415. Now, of course, there are much cheaper jump cues available, but the QTech is a cue that's made from premium materials and it should be compared to its peers, not to, you know, a $25 or a $50 jump cue. I'm not saying those cheaper jump cues will necessarily be worse than the QTech Propel, but I think in terms of value, we have to look at cues that use similar materials and similar production quality. When you compare the QTech Propel to a lot of those other cues, even the playing shafts alone, the value holds up pretty well in terms of comparing it to its peers from a materials value perspective. In fact, in my opinion, and this is one of the big reasons that I've switched basically all my equipment to carbon fiber, I think the durability value of carbon fiber alone is worth that extra cost considering it's extremely resistant to warp, it's resistant to changes in humidity and weather conditions, it's resistant to color change in terms of bluing from chalk, it's not scratch resistant but it's quite dent resistant as compared to wood. You know generally if you handle it as carefully as you would handle a wooden shaft, an investment into a carbon cue is potentially a lifetime investment. It's something you could have with you for the rest of your pool playing life if you look after it well. Okay, so in terms of materials and how it stands up to its peers, I think the QTech Propel holds up really well. The harder question to answer is, is any jump cue worth $479? I mean, after all, there would be plenty of matches you'd play where you would never need your jump cue at all. In some US pool variations, you are not even allowed to play jump shots. So is any jump cue worth $479? If you play rotation at a high level, I think anything that makes you feel confident playing a shot that gets you out of trouble is worth it. For example, in high level rotation games, there will be plenty of matches where the only chance you have to win is by playing a jump shot or by kicking your way out of trouble. And if $479 gives you the confidence to play that shot, then it's worth it. If a $50 jump cue gives you the confidence to play a jump shot when you're under the heat five nil down in a race to seven and you have to make a winning jump shot if you can do that with a $50 jump cue maybe this isn't worth it but jumping is a part of high level rotation if something like this helps you feel more comfortable doing it then in my opinion as something that's potentially a lifetime investment
investment, $470 is definitely worth it. Now, of course, without getting into the philosophy of consumerism, there's absolutely nothing wrong with spending money on something that makes you happy. Do you want to finish off your carbon collection? Then pick up the QTEC Propel. It's a great jump queue and it looks good. It'll it'll fit well. Are you just trying to black out your Q collection? QTEC Ghost Edition, it's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with spending money on something that you enjoy and makes you happy, particularly when it's a, an investment that could last you for quite a long time. I use the word investment because of course you're investing in your happiness or in the quality of a hobby that you enjoy. So in terms of value, at the end of the day, the $479 lives in your pocket and it's up to you whether you want to take it out and give it to QTEC. But from a materials perspective, in terms of the quality of the Q and performance, I think the QTEC Propel has pretty good value, particularly compared to its peers. I said earlier that I won't be able to tell you if you'll like this Q and I can't. I can tell you that I like the Q. I've only had it for a couple of weeks, but I already feel a lot more comfortable playing jump shots. I don't regret spending $479 on it. I think it was a good investment into my hobby that I enjoy. And hopefully I've been able to show you that it ticks all the boxes for a good quality, well-performing jump cue. It's flexible in terms of the mini extension or playing with just the main handle. It's light, it's strong, transfers energy well. It comes in great packaging. If that's something you like and you're willing to spend the money on, the QTEC Propel is a really good jump cue. I'm really happy with my purchase and I think anyone who can reconcile the cost will also be happy with their purchase. Whew. Okay guys, we made it to the end of Diamond Dave's deep dive on the QTEC Synergy Propel. If you've stayed with me this long, thank you very, very much. If I've answered any questions that you might have had about this cue or helped you in some way, don't be afraid to hit the sub button. I certainly won't get angry at you for doing it. Also, if you're in South Korea, particularly in Seoul, check out a website called poolinseoul.com. I'll put a link in the description somewhere. My friend Paul hosts the site and he maintains an up-to-date list of all the serious pool halls in Seoul. So if you live in Seoul or you're passing through and you want to have a game of pool, check out poolinsole.com. You'll be able to find a pool hall near you somewhere and it gives you a description of the facilities and instructions on how to get there. Paul, who runs that website, also happens to be a dealer for Seabits in America. If you're in South Korea and you do need some pool supplies, don't be afraid to hit Paul up at the link that I, like I said, will be in the description somewhere and he'll be able to help you out. All right, guys, that about wraps it up. Thanks for staying with me and until next time, get out there and enjoy playing some pool. Ciao.